So you're an attorney and you've decided to go out on your own. Now what? You need a plan and you're not alone. Join expert host Adriana Linares and her distinguished guests on New Solo. Tune into the lively conversation as they share insights and information about how to successfully run your law firm here on Legal Talk Network. Hello, welcome to New Solo. I'm Adriana Linares. I'm a legal technology trainer and consultant. I help lawyers and law firms use technology better. Today, we have a special episode, which is part two of the last episode, which was part one that we are recording at the Bar Association of San Francisco during the Solo and Small Firm First Annual Conference. Before I tell you about the guests that are on the show, we're going to take a minute to hear some words by me about our sponsors. Unbundled Attorney is a premium lead generation service that delivers exclusive leads directly into your inbox in real time. Looking to get more leads and grow your practice? Visit unbundledattorney.com today. Perfected is a legal-specific proofreading software that locates mistakes that neither spellcheck nor the most eagle eye lawyer can find. Try Perfected from IntelligentEditing.com. I also want to make sure and thank Answer One. It's a leading virtual receptionist and answering service provider for lawyers. You can find out more by giving them a call at 800 Answer One or online at answerone.com. That's www.answerthenumberone.com. I want to make sure and thank Clio, the world's leading cloud-based legal practice management software. Thousands of lawyers and legal professionals trust Clio to help grow and simplify their practices. Learn more at Clio.com. That's C-L-I-O dot com. All right. So we're back. And uh, if you listened to the last episode, which I hope you did, which was very informative, I'm sitting here with three San Francisco solos, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. This is Albert Thusen of Coit Law Group. I'm Rose Ellen Fairgreave of Fairgreave Law Office. And I'm Tony Kioso of Kioso Law. How's that feel, Tony? Feels like I'm throwing down the hammer every time I say it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you listened to the last episode, you may have heard that Albert's been out on his own for... Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Rose Ellen for about three years. And our true new solo is Tony, who's been out on his own for 30 days. Today, it's the 30-day anniversary of Kioso Law Firm. Let's go get a drink after this. We really need one. <laughs> so we had such a good time in the last episode and felt that there was so much information these, these lovely, lovely lawyers were sharing that we thought we'd give you some more tips. And during the break that we took, they went out, they scrambled, talked, networked, and then came back with pages of ideas that we want to share with you. So this is just going to be an episode filled with tips and tools and services and ideas that you all use and love. And I think, where do we start? Uh, one of my favorites. One of your favorites is the scan snap. And, uh, I love the Fujitsu scan snaps. Yes. Fujitsu, um, I believe, is also a Bay Area company. So shout out to Bay Area companies. The Fujitsu scan snap is as advertised. It is the uh, urban myth of um, scanners, and it is worth every penny. It's amazing. And I have challenged LT to convince me that I need the scan snap. So yes. let me just say what my setup is. We can't wait to hear this, Rosalind. <laughs> so I have two printers in my office. One is a super fast brother that is just black and white, that's just for printing out the really, you know, lengthy briefs and litigation kind of stuff that you have to do. It's great, functions quickly, et cetera. Then I have the an HP office jet that's a color printer for when I need the color and it's a scanner, obviously. And so is it has it, do they both sit on your desk or is one of them like the standalone all in one device? Like they're both in my office. Are they they're, desktop? Yes, okay, they're desktop. Got it. Yes, All right, two desktop. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they have their different purposes. Gotcha. And the other thing that I found that was really key was Sometimes one just decides it doesn't want to work. And so it's always my, I always have a backup, okay. which I have found that I've needed because I don't have an in-house IT person who I can call yeah. and say, come fix this right now because this filing is due in an hour. Right. Okay. And so how are you doing your scanning? Through the? Through my. The um, HP. The HP. It's got a flatbed and the feeder okay. that can feed double-sided. And so I feel like that is meeting my scanning needs. But LT seems to think that the scan snap can do something more. So can't right. wait to hear what By that the is. way, listeners, Albert's nickname is LT. So when you hear someone refer to LT, we're talking about Albert Thusen. 
The benefit of the scan snap is that it is amazingly fast. I'm sure your HP yeah. uh, was probably on par with the Epson that I still have in, in my system. The Epson scans at approximately one page every 14 to 15 seconds, Ooh, which is all fine for a two to three. Is that slow? For a two to oh three page God. document. But when opposing counsel sends me uh, records of 100 pages, uh, do the math. The scan snap scans at less than a page a second. It's super fast, double sided, it, and color if you want. Yeah, it's about 50 pages a minute. It's so crazy town. Sold. Let me get on <laughs> online right now. Hold, hold on, let me send you an affiliate link before you buy that on Amazon <laughs> Rosellen. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, I bought it as a, a, a Christmas present to myself last year, and uh, it's very nerdy. My wife doesn't understand why I got so cornballed out about it, but it works amazingly fast, and it just it's part of the reason you go solo is to give yourself some time to spend with your friends, family, or otherwise. Uh, this is exactly the sort of thing that does that. Yeah, it's been th- that's been a well-known scanner love by legal for a really long time because... It is really fast, but also they're very sturdy. Like, it, they just last forever. I've got a law firm in West Palm Beach that has one on every secretary's desk, and they've learned how to service them themselves. So when the little hairs need to change, they have figured out. I mean, these are these are the darlings of scanning and, and legal. So, okay, good. Scan snaps. Let's cross that off your list. LT, we talked about that one. <laughs> okay, what but else? I did. Let's go around this- Robin. Let's go around Robin. Roselle, you got we, a tip? I, can you just... Indulge me one second to add to the scanning discussion. Yeah, definitely. Which is another tool that I have just found absolutely that I couldn't do without is the TurboScan app on my phone. Okay, so you're an so iPhone user, and I'm maybe an there's user. one for Android, but it's called mm-hmm. TurboScan. Right, and you just, it's like three bucks or something, but it just, you can scan anything, anywhere. It goes straight to the PDF. You can email it. You can message it. So you, you can take a picture of it. It converts it to PDF. Right. And then you, it probably has the ability to save to popular things. Or Absolutely. Okay, you good. can do anything with it. Turbo scan. Turbo scan. All right. That was good. What about our new solo? Does he, our newest new solo, does he have a new tip? Okay. So now again, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm not the first person to figure this out. But if you're trying to save money as a new solo, which of course is the primary driver, then you start thinking about all the big ticket items. And you know, the, the biggest one for me was my insurance. Okay. And and then there's the virtual office space, which is much, much less by an order of magnitude. Then we go to things like research. And I really, I don't know what research plan I want to commit to. And truth be told, I don't need to do a ton of research right now for the three main practice areas that, I've, that I'm practicing right now, um, estate planning, employment law, and personal injury litigation. But I do sometimes, and I also want to go to a different, quiet kind of place. You put those all together, and and that works for me at law libraries. So we've got Mm. two, at least two amazing uh, law libraries uh, at UC Hastings and at USF, University of San Francisco. But we also have San Francisco's own law library, which, if you are not a solo, is going to cost you on the range of around $2,000 a year. But if you're a solo, it's free. So it's an incredible deal because they have just about every type of practice management software, practice guide, Lexus, Westlaw, you name it, available when you're in the library. So that's a savings of thousands of dollars right there. Um, that's a great tip. I haven't heard that one. And you don't have to be an alumni or anything? You just go in the law library and they've got all these resources you can use? Or you have to be an alum? You do not have to be an alumni. Oh, excellent. You just need to be a lawyer. Yeah, so... Oh, 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 that's very On good. one hand, you've got the, the law schools, and if you're uh, a bar card holder, then uh, you can go into their law libraries. If you otherwise want to, City of San Francisco has a law library that Tony was referencing, and they've got a great program for solo and small firms, Excellent. which is either free or close to free, and they've got a staff of five or six researchers who've got master's degrees in librarian studies, and you tell them the type of case you're working hmm. on, and it's like your own research team. Ah, that's and, awesome. And they send it to you for free within a couple hours. They say a couple days, usually within a couple hours. Uh, books, law reviews, high and online access materials, uh, Lexus Westlaw materials from time to time. There's page limits and things like that, but it's a great resource we have here. I think that's great. And we have to mention one of my other favorites, which is FastCase. You know, FastCase, and I know at least in California, is a member benefit, and it is for many states. 
And what I hear often from lawyers is, I haven't tried it. I don't know that much about it. But the truth is that you get a lot of research for free because of your bar membership. And then if you do decide to upgrade to a paid, it's going to give you all the research you need. And I think it's pretty affordable, $200 a year. It's ridiculously cheap. So please, lawyers, go look at FastCase or... um, Whatever your state, I forget the name of the other one, whatever your state gives you a discount through, Fast Case is my personal favorite. And they bought Lois Law recently, so they're, I think it was Lois Law, I hope I'm not saying that wrong. Um, they're really advancing what they're able to do and the services that they provide is a great research service that is not going to cost you what some of those other costly services might cost. Okay, what's your next tip, LT? Video conferencing. Okay, let's talk um, about video conferencing. Traffic in the Bay Area is horrible. Yep. Uh, parking outside of my office is atrocious and very expensive. So uh, here in the Bay Area, we're pretty hip with video conferencing. Okay. And uh, a client from your neck of the woods, actually, from Tampa, mm-hmm. he made a recommendation to me that I use a conference line, which is aptly named freeconferencecall.com. Excellent. And I thought, what a plain name, but it was an excellent service, free, great clarity. They've got both free conference calls plus video networking, Skype-like, screen sharing the works. Excellent. And uh, I've also been uh, recently turned on to um, Uber Conference, which uh, is very similar and so far seems to be of equally great quality. They, of course, have a free version, you know, a little bit of uh, commercials here or there, advertising on the on the screen or whatnot. Otherwise, uh, membership is, you know, a few bucks, something like that. But it reduces the need to meet with clients in person, and uh, it's really a valuable part of, of my, my business. So my favorite is a product called Zoom, zoom.us. It's high def. You pay a small fee per month. I mean, they have a free too, but it's worth, and it's uh, by small fee, I, I think I mean $15 a month. It's super cheap. It has a little app that sits on my desktop, and it's also on my mobile phone, and I can send invites directly to everyone from inside Zoom, and it has a built-in Outlook for the PC module. So if I launch a meeting inside Outlook, I can hit the Zoom button, and it puts all the information in there. It's very cool. So zoom.us is my favorite. And I've done that, and they're very good as well. They're very good, and it records in high def, and it can be used on any device, and it creates very few problems, and everybody always figures out how to use it, so that's good. All right, Roselle, you got another tip for us? Um, Well, for me, the thing that made the most impact when I went out on my own was really finding a community. And so here, we're very fortunate to have the solo small firm section in San Francisco, and we have monthly brown bags. And I found that, you know, just showing up, and even if you're not particularly into whatever topic they have, you're building your network of other people in your same situation. And that was really key to... And that's another fear I think a lot of new solos have is I'm going to miss the community of being in an office and walking down the hall and be able, you know, you know, talking to my comrades about a problem. But then you can create that community and your bar association can be at the center of it or an inns of court or some other association or there's, you know, the American Bar Association's solo, general practice solo small firm has a great listserv called... Uh, Solo says. And then there's also the Max in the Law Office group. If you're a Mac, it's called Milo. So you can Google Max in Law Office. And they have a great online community where they ask each other questions and, you know, they help each other. So there's physical communities you can become a part of. And of course, there's some virtual ones that can be pretty powerful. My turn? Yeah. Okay. So I spent the last 12 years in insurance defense. And 30 days ago, I decided to become a plaintiff's attorney. So I wasn't bringing any of that business with me. And like I said in the last episode, business has come. But there's also gaps of time where I'm not dealing with a client issue. And how am I going to make that the most, get the most bang for my buck and keep me busy? Because there's, you know, an, an idle mind is the devil's playground. And so besides just setting up coffees and lunches with other solos and practitioners, I'm marketing my estate plan business through financial planners and real estate agents who I've actually gotten quite a few recommendations from already. And then I'm I, I'm playing with practice management software and client intake software. Have and you picked one yet? Have we asked you? Um, I'm, I'm ready to commit, I think. All right, finish your thought. Okay. I don't want to interrupt you. I mean, I did, but... Well, I think, I think now's the time because I want to talk about them. So okay. I tried several different practice management software formats and it got to the point where I just needed to pick because I didn't want to spend any more time messing around with 
other things. I just needed to, you know, get going. So I ended up going with Clio, and I'm also using Lexicata for client intake. Excellent. Now, the thing is, there's a tremendous amount of, of work on the learning curve side, and they have all kinds of online things for, for right. you Right, there's to, videos and videos tutorials. The customer and, service will walk you through anything. Real good customer service, but you still have to do the work yourself, mm -hmm. and you have to figure it out yourself, and that's by doing it over and over and over again and setting up your own your strategy. How are you going to take a client call and get that information into your computer? And do you need extra... It, depending on the practice area, you're going to want to ask certain questions. So you right. have to have different Customize. templates and, and all that. And so that is taking quite a bit of my time when I have it. And it should, because what happens to a lot of lawyers is they don't do it now. And then three years later, they've got all kinds of systems and spreadsheets and the information is in all these really bad places. So taking that time up front now, look at Roselle's going, yes, yes, I know exactly how this goes, um, is really important. Yeah. And I had heard from lots of practitioners is, in the months leading up to this launch, I talked to a lot of people, and I wanted to get all the different ideas, and everybody has their own opinion. But one of the things I consistently heard was, oh, I wish I had gotten right. that software sooner, because it's once you have to work your way out of that, it's a lot more work. You've Bad gotta, habits are hard to break, or yeah. actually any habit. And so that's what I see happening all the time, is lawyers forming habits that might not be the most efficient. Let's stop for just a second, and I want you, so I was in the restroom, few minutes ago. And this adorable, this just this little angel came to me and she said, you know, I liked your talk, but I'm afraid I've been raising a kid. I'm going back on my own. I don't think I'll get clients. And I said, oh my God, we just talked about this. So I made her come over to you and say, talk to Tony. He's literally been out there for 30 days. And so tell us about that conversation because that is the biggest fear that lawyers all have. And here was a perfect, and she and her, and her, I think her, her law partner, right, that came up and also That's started right. talking to you and they were worried that they're not going to get clients. Well, you know, her out of just about anybody I've talked to about this should not be worried about it because she has such a minute niche mm. practice of migrating foreign companies. It just, it seems like such a strange, I want to call it strange, but very specific. It should be really easy, one, for her to market that. Right. And two, I told her, the worst anxiety and fear I had was up until day one. And then once I got started, I didn't have time to be afraid about it. I was busy every minute of the day. And that's part of it is just keep your days planned, stick to your schedule and the work will come and you'll get used to it. And I've already forgotten about my old life. And that's just been a month now. That's amazing, isn't it? I love that. Okay, let's go to, on to another tip. LT, you got something? I see uh, you got all kinds of notes there. I do. I'm going to go off the notes. I think the tip I can give to a new solo is in the spirit of time management. Okay. In that you may feel as though a wave is coming over you uh, at the first point. But it's important while you have the free time before the thousand clients are knocking at your door every day, that you figure out how you're going to spend your week. And I think that is going to include looking for new clients, business development, one way or the other. And before I got started, I was of the opinion, probably foolishly, that I would need to spend somewhere around, let's say, 10% of my week in the areas of business development. I find it more to be upwards of probably 35%. And business development doesn't necessarily have to mean, you know, schmoozing a client. It's attending networking events. It's attending CLEs. It's attending business groups. It's shaking hands with colleagues you haven't seen in years. And when I got started in October of 2014, just about a month and a half later, Christmas party started. So my wife was used to me coming home at the end of the day at around 530 and for a series of weeks, I kept coming home later and later and later. And she would ask me, where are you going? And I said, well, I had a happy hour tonight, or I had a Christmas party tonight, or I had some sort of festivist celebration, or whatever <laughs> it was. And so my wife kind of turns to me, she says, do you have a drinking problem? <laughs> and I said, no, honey, but nobody's going to knock on our door and say, excuse me, does a lawyer Maybe live here? Maybe she wanted you to invite her. That's true. That's true. Nobody's going to knock on the door and ask if a lawyer lives here. That's so right. I needed to spend time every week one way or the other. And it can be fun. Some of it's boring. Some of it's great. But it's important that you lock out a certain amount of hours per week that you dedicate to the area of getting new business one way or the other. I think that is incredibly important. Otherwise, those clients will not just show up. I love that you said no one's going to knock on the door and ask if there's a lawyer that lives here. 
<laughs> Listen, before we move on to our next segment, we're going to take a quick break to hear a message from our sponsors. But before I actually cut in the message sponsors, I want to talk about them as actual tips because all of these sponsors, um, I have a little bit of say in the sponsors that, that come on the show because I want to believe in them and, and like their products. So I actually use one of them. It's called Perfect It. Write that down. You guys want this. Perfect It is really cool. It's an add-in for Microsoft Word. And then it works really well with another tool called Word Rake that I use all the time. Even in my emails, it sits inside of Outlook as well. So they're both PC, I think, which we're all, you're all PCs here. So here's an example of what Perfect It does. I spell email with a dash, without a dash. Sometimes I capitalize it in one document. It goes through. It says, you've got email spelled three different ways here. Which one do you want it? And it fixes it in all of them. If I have an ellipsis and maybe I missed one, it says, you know, you've got two dots here. If I've capitalized firm on three pages but didn't capitalize it in two pages, it says you've got the word firm. Capital. So it really perfects your grammar throughout. It's a very cool tool. And then word rake goes in, it analyzes what you wrote, and it makes suggestions for how to make that sentence better, that thought more clear. I use those all the time because I'm not really a good a writer. You guys are. You're trained to be good writers. I'm not. So even for a non-lawyer, I like both of those tools. Answer One is a great answering service. So we've mentioned Ruby a couple times, and Answer One is another great service that everyone should research and take a look at. And then, of course, Clio, which is my favorite. We all know, and that's because when Clio was born, I feel like I was there, and I nurtured, helped nurture them. And it, it is... Um, I don't need to say much more about Clio, but I will say that one of the reasons I like Clio so much is because of its open API, which means it allows other programs and services to plug into it and pick up where they don't um, specialize. So that's one of the reasons it's my favorite. And then Unbundled Attorney is a great lead generation tool. So it's a service. They're actually based in LA. Two episodes ago on New Solo, I actually interviewed the founder about alternative fee arrangements and how he trains his clients, which are the lawyers, but they also are a pretty powerful lead generation tool. So having said all that is my set of tips. I'm going to launch into uh, some recordings as commercials for them, and then we'll come right back. Is your firm experiencing missed calls, empty voicemail boxes, and potential clients you'll never hear from again? Enter Answer One Virtual Receptionists. They're more than just an answering service. Answer One's available 24-7. They can even schedule appointments, respond to emails, integrate with Clio, and much more. Answer One helps make sure your clients have the experience they deserve. Give them a call at 1-800-ANSWER-1 or visit them at answerone.com forward slash podcast for a special offer. Imagine how much faster you could work if you spent less time proofreading. Almost every lawyer wastes hours each week proofreading rather than producing legal work. With Perfect It's American Legal Style, you spend less time proofreading and have more time to focus on substantive matters. It's easy to use and there's no training required. Try Perfect It for free from intelligentediting.com and start saving time on proofreading today. Are you a family law, immigration, or estate planning attorney looking to attract new leads and retain more clients? Join hundreds of other solos and small firms just like you who use Unbundled Attorney to receive premium, exclusive leads delivered directly into their inbox in real time. To learn more about how their lead generation services can grow your practice, subscribe to the Unbundled Attorney Mastermind Podcast or visit unbundledattorney.com today. Clio is an invaluable software solution for law firms of all sizes, handling all the demands of your growing practice from a single cloud-based platform. Clio enhances your firm with features such as matter and document management, time tracking, and even billing. Clio is an effortless tool that helps lawyers focus on what they do best, practice law. Learn more at Clio.com. That's C-L-I-O dot com. All right, welcome back to New Solo. I'm Adriana Linares, and with me are three very cool attorneys from San Francisco. Anthony Chioso. I'm going to just try everybody's names. Albert Thusen and Rose Ellen Fairgreave. Nice. We're just going around sharing tips and tools with these lawyers who have been out on their own for 30 days, three years, two and a half years. And um, I think it's been really useful. Rose Ellen, you got another tip for us? We'll come back to you. Tony, you got another tip yeah. for us? Uh, you, you know, Rome, <laughs> Rome wasn't built in a day. I knew when I started that at some point I'd want to make a cool logo. And I haven't done that yet. 
and it's not something you have, I think, that you have to do first. It's kind of like the website. Do you really have to have the most amazing website before day one? I don't think so. Just get it up. People are going to check it to make sure you're legit. So the other thing is that there's spaces of time that sometimes you have when you're, that I've had since I've been starting. I'll just talk from my own perspective. And so I fill some of that up by uh, listening to CLEs and webcasts and, and expanding into my practice areas in a much more deeper, richer way. This is the time that I have to do things like that. I, I know I could see it coming down the pike already that a few months from now, maybe even, I'm not going to have that much time to just sit and listen to a podcast. And so if I'm not doing that, I'm coming into the Bar Association and, and attending one of their weekly CLEs too. Very good. You got another tip for us, LT? Sure. Um, I think the tip I wanted to share is the importance of getting to know the folks who are serving in a a quasi-support staff role. Okay. And for some of us, that is a reception service. For some of us, that is the greeter at a virtual office. For some of us, that may be someone at your uh, law library or your local bar association. But my point is, it's important that you make friends with these folks who are supporting you one way or the other. And in my particular office, it's important that um, I've got a shared receptionist, and she needs to have an understanding that a lawyer works here, and certain things uh, need to be brought to my attention immediately, like yesterday. And if I uh, don't treat that person with an appropriate amount of respect and friendliness on a regular basis, then my work product will suffer. So I've heard on your podcast before, others indicate the importance of, as I like to say, just be cool to people. If you are cool to people, then they will be cool back to you. And it is important, the individuals with whom you've got a professional relationship, they understand what your needs are, and the friendlier you are to them, they will support you more. And folks in our profession don't always have a great reputation for being friendly. So go out and be cool to people. Just be cool. Just be nice. Be nice. Well, and I would say that applies on the cases you're handling as well. I find that most of my referrals come from other attorneys. And they come from attorneys that I, you know, had a case against 20 years ago. So it's it's just a good practice all around to, you know, always be cool, always be nice. And you can represent your client vigorously as well as without being a jerk without being a jerk yeah and that goes a long way okay i'm going to build on this thing and again i didn't i didn't invent this theory but one thing that that happens quite often is that you get a lead you get a referral from someone and you don't really think that you can help them you know and that happens to me every once in a while it's too far outside of my practice area and, and some of the areas that, that do come in that are outside of my practice area I take because I'm just interested and I like to know how things work. But sometimes it's just not going to happen. And instead of just telling someone, sorry, can't help you, keep in mind, or I keep in mind, that they, you might not actually do business with them this time, but refer them to somebody else who can help them and, and be as friendly and helpful as you can because this time they're not going to need your services, but next time one of their friends or family member says, I need a lawyer for this, it's like, oh, I know that lawyer that helped me out. That's who you should call. And it's, it's just so easy. That's such an easy tip. And I think what happens is lawyers just get so busy. Sometimes that you forget that someone might remember you two years later just because you were cool and you did help them. And that's the key is you want to stay top of mind. You want to be at the top of someone's mind when they have a friend who needs a lawyer or when they need a lawyer. They're already in your door. They're you know, they're already door. in your door. And so you didn't you didn't have to go market to them. They're going to go market for you. So let's talk a little bit about marketing. We haven't talked about marketing yet. Other than networking and you built a website, are any of you paying for marketing services or do you plan to? Or um, have you thought about commercials or any tips or ideas that you've... Oh, Roselle's got a big smile on her face. <laughs> no, I, I yes. I um, As our senior. She's our senior attorney. Right. And I, I hesitate to, to let this out because... Well, don't give away any secrets. Uh, no, I do, I do pay for help with social media. Oh, excellent. So yeah. do I. And I think that's okay. Because you need... I think the thing is, is that 
not only do you need to have a presence, but you need to have an ongoing and consistent presence to stay top of mind. And so I think I realized this when, like, I wrote an article for the Bar Association and then they, you know, sent it out on Twitter and then all of a sudden I had followers and I was like, "Uh uh-oh, now I have followers, I need to talk to these people. And so, you know, it's just one of those things that you, it's really hard to stay on top of when you're doing everything else. So making sure that you have a consistent presence, I think is really important because it is that staying on top of mind, Mm -hmm. you know, because people will forget that you're out there doing what you're doing, not because they don't like you, just because they get busy and they forget. People forget. Um, I was going to tell you guys last night when we were out at the Stinkin' Rose and Vesuvio, very cool places in San Francisco that my new friends took me to. um, Have you all heard of the Lawyernomics Conference? So you've heard of AVO, right? Everybody knows AVO. Oh, they're here. I wish I had time to hang. Oh, no, they're in Seattle. Never mind. Okay, good. I feel better. Um, The Lawyernomics Conference by AVO is in Las Vegas every year, and it's a marketing conference. Teaches lawyers all kinds of cool things about marketing. I went last year, and it was so good. So if you're looking for a great marketing conference specifically for lawyers, that's a good one year after year. Um, of course, I have to pitch the ABA Tech Show because I'm the chair this year. And whether you make it this year before March 17th, it's during St. Patrick's Day this year, 2017, or you make it for next year when you, maybe your budget's a little bit bigger, the ABA Tech Show is a great conference where we spend three days, um, and it's every category, marketing, technology, management, and um, accounting get covered in finance. So a couple of really good conferences to go around. Where is that? In Chicago, every year. Ah, okay. And um, it's really, really good. Lawyeronomics is really good. And then I think there's one more that I really like that I go to every year. Oh, yeah. The Bar Association of San Francisco, second annual solo solo small firm (laughs) conference will be in 2018. Yes, it will. Um, I think we should take a minute to talk about your bar association and encourage lawyers You know, a lot of lawyers think they don't need to be members of their local bar association or they're only members of their state bar association because they have to be. It's, you know, but you all are very dedicated to this bar and it seems like it does a lot. The woman that that gave the the talk, I missed who she was. Carolyn. Is she your executive director or? Uh, She's our, our immediate past president. Oh, okay. And she was so heartfelt and and I'm sorry I missed her name, I just walked in late, but she really meant the things that she was saying about how hard these bar associations will work. And it really sounds to me like you all get a lot out of it. And I think it's important to encourage, again, building that community and having a place to go. And then if you are part of a bar association that doesn't have brown bag lunches, that's never had a solo small firm conference, be the one that goes to them and says, I want to organize this, our members need it. And that's what you guys did. Well, for me, um, I was a member of... BASF, uh, immediately out of law school. I joined a big firm. They paid for my membership dues. I hardly ever came. I was too busy with my big firm. But when I went solo, I realized that it can be a lonely existence and you need to see other people who are also in the trenches with you. So coming to meetings here at BASF, be it our uh, you know monthly brown bag lunches or the CLEs that are dedicated to the small firm practitioners or the social events or whatnot, you are seeing your brothers and sisters that are in the same stresses, in the same highs and lows as you are. And it's really, really encouraging. It almost feels as though we are one super large law firm. And when I worked on the other side, I had heard urban myths about how solos and particularly plaintiff's lawyers worked with each other, but I hadn't seen it with my own eyes very often. I can tell you unequivocally, the moment you go out on your own, you have hundreds of thousands of other lawyers who are in similar straits, and they are just, they're waiting to help you. They are. No, that's great. And um, I can also say that if you are going to be that person who says, I want to plan a conference or I want to do something that helps, call me. I help bar associations of all sizes all the time. I help bring in sponsors and we bring in speakers and it's not that hard. And that's part of that networking that you're doing because what a better way to get your name out to the local community by being on the committee that helps organize conferences and practice management stuff. And of course, I think that's really important because my whole world is practice management and technology. And Roselyn is the co-chair of the solo and small firm section. Excellent. Well, all right, guys. Is there any last tips we forgot 
before we wrap this up? I think this, I mean, I think people's heads are going to explode already. Yeah. Oh, that's another good point, actually. <laughs> There's so much to digest when you're going solo. But just take a deep breath, make lots of lists, check things off your list. I mean, that's what kept me sane the whole time. And knowing that I had a deadline and when I was going to launch, it was firm, you know, a good month out, really, really, really has soothed my, um, I don't know, my anxieties about going solo. One, of course, not getting enough business. Two, just how is it all going to work? It all works. You get the business. You meet people that will help you. You ask lots of questions. Maybe you think you're swallowing your pride. I don't. I think that reaching out is not a sign of weakness. I think it's a sign that that you are confident in the fact that you need help. I think that's such a great way to end part two of our Totally Awesome series. If there's two, is it a series? I believe it's a pair. It's a pair of our pair of podcasts from the Bar Association of San Francisco. So before I let everyone go, I'd like to ask you to each give one last words of inspiration or piece of advice and then remind people how they can keep an eye on you. Uh, again, this is Albert Thusen, Coit Law Group of San Francisco. You can find me on uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. And about the best words of the wise I can give is believe in yourself. If you got through law school, you probably didn't do it alone. You probably had a network of friends and family and neighbors who cared for you. And when you decide to go out on your own, that same network is going to be there to help you and encourage you and make sure that your parachute opens when you jump out of the plane. And we should use this as a great opportunity. What kind of referrals do you like? Albert Thusen spelled T-H-U-E-S-E-N. Uh, my primary practice is in personal injury. Uh, I take cases both here in the Bay Area as well as in uh, Oregon, Washington, and Nevada. Great. What about you, Rose Ellen? I am Rose Ellen Fairgreave at Fairgreave Law Office, and Fairgreave is spelled F-A-I-R-G-R-I-E-V-E. And, I mean, LT said it as well as it could be said. Your network, you don't even realize you who they are and where they are and that they exist until you go out on your own, and then there they are. And if somebody thought you were so sweet and amazing and they wanted to send you some clients, what type of referrals would you like? I do employer side advice and counseling and litigation defense. Excellent. And our young new solo here. All right. Um, if you want to reach me, you can reach me at Tony at KiosoLaw.com. And if you don't know how to uh, spell in Italian, that's C-H-I-O-S-S-O Law.com. Um, I... Uh, my words of wisdom to a new solo, I don't really think I have any words of wisdom other than you can do it if you really want to and just keep in the back of your mind, your heart, what's motivating you to do this, to make this step. And that will keep you going. And what kind of referrals would you like from the world? Okay, well. If there was a referral machine out there, which new solo can be. <laughs> so the first thing is personal injury. And I've been uh, on the defense side for 12 years and now I've taken my practice to the plaintiff side. Excellent. And so I'm, I've, I've seen behind the curtain, and I know the process is back there, and I can really position my clients as best as possible for the best outcome. And I also do quite a bit of state planning. Excellent. Awesome. Well, everyone, looks like we've reached the end of another great episode. We want to make sure and thank everyone and thank our sponsors. And... Don't forget to give us a, a rating on iTunes. I keep forgetting to ask people to do that. That would be great if you like uh, the podcast. We'd appreciate some five-star ratings. If you don't like the podcast, just delete it. Don't listen to it again. But don't say anything bad about us. Make sure you visit LegalTalkNetwork.com to learn more about what you've heard. We put transcripts and information about all the tools and resources that we talk about during these past two episodes and more out there. Of course, you can find us on iTunes, RSS, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm Adriana Linares. Thanks again. Join us next time for another great episode of New Solo. And remember, you're not alone. You're New Solo. Thanks for listening to New Solo with host Adriana Linares. Tune in again to learn more about how to successfully run your new practice. Solo, here on Legal Talk Network.
The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.